Welcome back to my channel. I'm Traven, and today we're continuing on the road to wind and truth with the prologue and day one of the release chapters from Reactor Magazine. These are just my quick thoughts on the first 13 chapters and the prologue of Wind and Truth, which you can find for free on Reactor Magazine's website, along with the audiobook chapters from Macmillan Audio. I'm not going to be doing any like deep dives into Cosmere lore. I know there are some things going on, particularly with the prologue, that have more or less confirmed some suspicions that people have had about things going on in the background, but these are just my like initial thoughts how i feel the book is going so far and what direction i think it's going to take in the future we're going to start with that prologue because i think it's really impressive how sanderson has managed to make the same night's event the prologue for every single book up to this point and still made it engaging and give you more information so in the first book we were seeing this night from the viewpoint of an assassin which was a really good choice to give us a idea of how the magic worked in this world um, and to give us some idea of the key players at that time as time has progressed we've gotten closer and closer uh, to elicar the king's perspective which is what we finally get in wind and truth and with it uh, a lot of, again, that kind of deeper lore uh, confirms a lot of things, but gets me to the point where my feelings have pretty much completely reversed from when I read the first Stormlight Archive book in that uh, there, you know, the king is under threat. There's an assassination. You kind of identify with him and trying to protect himself. Uh, and progressively, we've learned more and more about kind of what a terrible person he was. Having the prologue from his point of view takes away any ambiguity of that uh, malicious nature because you are getting his own personal thoughts and his feelings. You can see how manipulative he is and how hungry for power he is. And while you might have believed early on, uh, due to the way that Dalinar has approached learning about the Knights Radiant and trying to reform this order that uh, the King was the same way, but uh, very much not so. Uh, he is trying to refine this order just for himself to get immortality. It's really impressive that this can all be done with essentially replaying the same scene from different characters' perspectives, getting closer and closer to that revelation of his true intentions and his true attitude, his true beliefs and behavior, and to make it to where you go from kind of rooting for him and, and worried about him uh, to being completely disgusted by him and completely opposed to his entire worldview. I thought that was really cool. I liked that quite a bit. Very strong intro for the book. The rest of day one has followed kind of a predictable plot progression at the beginning of each of these installments. We have the characters all beginning in disparate places, all of them finding some kind of imminent threat that they have to deal with. In some cases, maybe not even a threat, but some sort of task that they are required to do that is ultimately going to drive them all apart. But we do have have brief moments with the characters together and these are honestly my favorite parts of the book when all the characters are together I feel like the book flows so much better it jumps around from character to character instead of being stuck in one perspective for an entire book length I really do like the characters playing off each other um, but we know that they're all going their separate ways so Dalinar has the contest of champions that he has to worry about it's we, we know for sure that Kaladin is not going to be his champion, um, but we're not sure who it's going to be. There's a lot of speculation that Dalinar himself is going to take that up, and we're not sure who Odium is going to pick either, although there's speculation there as well. That is one of the branches, one of the, one of the paths we're going to take throughout this story. The second is Kaladin is taking Sazed to uh, one of the uh, old Night Radiants who have gone crazy, um, and he's tasked with just trying to understand them and trying to, I guess, heal them. In book four, Kaladin essentially began the process of inventing therapy because he 
has gone through these trying times and gone through all this uh, turmoil. And so he can identify with these people that others dismiss as crazy. And he can see that like isolating them is not helping. They need to talk to someone else. And so it's Dalinar's hope, I think, that uh, Kaladin's able to talk with this old Knight's Radiant and try to get him to make some sense or come back to reality and help them because they really could use his assistance. The book suggests that this is not going to happen. Like it's not, that's not what his ultimate trial is going to be. Hoyd has stepped in and basically said that there's something else going on that Kaladin is going to be a part of that's possibly even more important than the Contest of Champions, which seems like a very bold statement considering that is arguably deciding the fate of the entire planet. But when you're dealing with Hoyd, you could be talking about uh, ramifications that ripple across the entire Cosmere. So we'll have to see how that works out for Kaladin's story. And then we have uh, Adeline and Shallan. It has come to their attention that there are forces amassing on the other side of the Shadesmar. So uh, they are concerned that the Fused are going to attack in some way, that they're amassing some sort of counterattack, and they're going to go and deal with that. So again, we have the splintering, the different directions they're going to go. I imagine we're going to get to the point where an entire part of the book is dealing with just one of those stories, then another one's dealing with another one of those stories. My assumption would be that the... Adeline and Shallan storyline gets wrapped up first because it seems like it's a counteroffensive before the Contest of Champions. So that seems like it's going to reach some sort of conclusion first. We are going to likely then have the Contest of Champions ending. We have a very obvious time frame for that. So we've got 10 days. Everything I'm reviewing today is day one. And then I think my assumption would be that Kaladin's arc his story is going to actually go past that 10 days uh to some ramifications beyond just what's happening on roshar and just what's happening in the stormlight archive i'm going to guess that uh kaladin's story is going to be the last one to wrap up in this book speaking of kaladin we have some things that i would consider red flags for this book and that starts with the very first sentence of the very first chapter kaladin felt good and if you know what's been happening with Kaladin throughout the entirety of the story, that seems very positive, but it's one of those things that just like makes me immediately nervous for him because it's like one of those things where it's like, oh, I'm just two days away from retirement or, you know, these things that people say where you just know something bad's going to happen later down the line. And Kaladin is definitely the character that we like beating up on he's everyone's favorite sad boy and so um i just have this feeling that it's not going to end well for kaladin there's one of two choices for how kaladin's story ends either he is going to end up dying by the end of the book or he's going to ascend and be another one of these key players for the larger cosmere that seems to be where a lot of people's heads are at and just Again, given this opening line, I have a feeling like he, it's not going to end well for him. Whether he, he passes on or, or what happens, I don't know. Um, but I just I, I don't I don't trust that that it's going to end out. It's going to end well for him. There's also the scene where, again, very briefly, uh, Kaladin. Adeline and Shallan are all together for like one moment for one scene and Shallan basically begs Kaladin to promise that they'll go out for drinks and and go party after all this is done and Kaladin says drinks jokes laughter at the end I promise and that isn't quite what they were asking for. That isn't quite what Shalad asked him to promise. That at the end seems pretty, um, se seems a little bit dubious, seems a little bit suspicious. And so I just imagine in my, in my mind, I'm seeing that scene from uh, One Piece where Dr. Hero look is uh, you know, laughing and, and toasting and then he explodes. Spoilers for One Piece, like that's you know, 
what, 20 years old at this point. Um, but just like this idea that there's going to be some conclusion for him that, in, that, that deals with him like toasting them and laughing in the face of his own demise. It just, it just really struck me as another one of these red flags, like something bad's going to happen to him. Last thing I want to co comment on is probably my favorite one-off chapter in the entire series so far, which is chapter 10, which was titled Book Quartermaster, in which Kaladin goes in to get some books from the librarian who he doesn't know the titles for uh, the different positions in the library. So he just refers to them as the book quartermaster. It's just a scene with him and Syl and this librarian and the librarian is very uh, dismissive of Syl and very rude. It doesn't serve a lot of purpose in the larger plot, I don't feel, but it does serve a very good purpose in uh, doing more with uh, Syl and Kaladin's relationship, uh, fleshing out a little bit more of Kaladin's um, oaths and what they mean to him and what he feels like he needs to do and what when he needs to speak up to other people and tell them that they're on the wrong path. Um, and also just, I agree with Syl that it's completely adorable that he calls this woman the book quartermaster. It's a fluff scene, but it's a fluff scene that I really enjoyed and that really worked for me. And so it was another one that I wanted to mention in this first day. So that's kind of a setup. At this point, we are all going our separate ways. I'll be back at the end of the week with the interlude chapters between day one and two, day two, and then probably the interlude chapters after day two. We'll have to see if those are posted. Right now, chapter 33 is the last one to be posted, but there should be another one up tomorrow ahead of the release on Friday. Until then, I hope your reading journey is going well. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so we can grow this corner of our booktube community. And until the next one, Take care.